Hello, everybody, and welcome back to New Jersey City University's esports broadcast of the ECA ECAC Smash Brothers Tournament. It's another round of crew battles for us this time, folks, and it's the familiar faces from the New Jersey uh, City University team. We got Artie, we got Ziglet, and we got Hydra, a formidable lineup that is going for their three-peat. They are two-time champions of the ECAC League, and they're looking to get the uh, three CAC. So we are going to see them try to continue their winning streak now as they're going up against, I believe, uh, Johnson and Wales University, their yellow team, their yellow division. And that is going to be quite tricky. I mean, we don't know a ton about them quite yet, uh, but we do have their players. So if you'll just give me one moment, folks, as I get that up and ready for you. Obviously, we don't have stats on these players' past performances, but do have their names, which is, well, better than we often have. Uh, the lineup for Johnson & Wales' yellow team this time is going to be BMO, Fruit Pack, and Ray. Now, we are just going to go for a quick break as we get this figured out, but uh, one last thing to get the broadcast going. But when we return, we're going to have these crew battles for you. Best of three, 3v3, nine stocks. Don't miss it. We'll see you in a second. Wait, we might have the feed again. We don't even have to go to break. Um, so, as we have this arena set up, we're just waiting. And again, I gotta wonder what the lineup is going to be for tonight. Because we got Team Captain Hydra, who I would go out on a limb and say is probably what the best player on the uh, NJCU team. I mean, he's previously been on the Wi-Fi Warriors ranking patch uh, season four, I believe, during the summer. And I mean, he was like, I think 17 on there, impressive. But you gotta keep in mind, just because he's up there doesn't mean the other players aren't good. Uh, last season, regularly, already with the Palutena was nine stocking other teams, just running through the bracket, not even letting the other people get a chance to play. So I, <laughs> If there are any members of uh, Johnson & Wales in the chat, I do not mean to psych you out right now, but it is going to be a wall for them to climb. It is kind of the pattern you follow when it's always going to be uh, the best team, one of the better teams, the former champion. It's like if every single match in pools followed MK Leo. You don't want to do that, because you know who's probably going to win that. But there can always be upsets, and NJCU, they got to be on their guard constantly. We're just trying to get in here now. It looks like it's going to be Ziglet coming into the arena first. You may remember them from last week. They got the Luigi. They pulled the wolf out of nowhere last time, and even though their tag says no fundies, you know that's a lie from the way they played that wolf. Now. Uh, they are kind of a everything player. They hop around from character to character. I believe they play Luigi primarily, but that doesn't mean they'll stick to it the entire time. So we'll have to see what they plan to bring out, because Luigi is not a character with no weaknesses. Uh, if you just get rushed down, if you get... Uh, if they play... Well, most characters in Ultimate lose if they you camp them out. But Luigi in particular has tough a tough time approaching, especially against a character like, say, Wolf, who has a transcendent projectile. You do not want that flying towards you when you're Luigi, and you don't have a lot of approach options besides that one read, that one grab. Meanwhile, we got Heck coming in. Um, I do not know which member of uh, Johnson & Wales that is, but uh, I guess we'll see from their tag once we get into it. Maybe. Hopefully. Uh, that is my wish. They are rocking that Funky Kong icon, which I'll, I always appreciate. Um, yeah, both players selecting their characters now, getting ready to get into the ring. And honestly, I'm pretty excited for this tonight. It's I, I don't get the opportunity to cast Smash that often, so when I do, it's always a delight. It's always a fun time here at NJCU. Now, again, uh... I wish 
I had been given a little more intel going into this, so I'd have a little more to talk about. But we do know at the very least that uh Uh, I hope the audience can hear me, but if not, um, ah, ah, I see, I see. Well, waiting patiently. I do want to talk about, it does seem to be the strategy to throw out Ziglet first. And I, I do kind of appreciate that because Ziglet is, when you don't really have a main, as Ziglet has proven. I mean, they got they got a Falcon, they got a Pikachu that apparently is only a week or two old, but when that happens, you have a lot of chance to chances to feel out your opponent. And it, it's always good for the mind game. Like, for example, last week Ziglet went Luigi first, and then they sent in Ziglet first the following game, once NJC had already won one, and Ziglet pulled out the wolf. So it, it's hard to predict where exactly the character switch-ups are going to come in. I don't believe you can switch up mid-crew battle, but in between crew battles, you can definitely do that. So, again, uh, I assume we're doing stage bands right now or something of the like, trying to figure out where exactly we're starting. Right now, uh, it does look like PS2 is going to be the preferred battleground for these challengers, but... Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the map pick setup is. Oh, looks like Heck has selected their character finally. Always happy to see it. Uh, just waiting on Ziglet now, waiting to get the read on it. And once the action starts, we will be happy. Um, all right. Looks like both players have selected their characters. Ziglet is the first to enter the ring, waiting for the Johnson and Wales representative to hop in there. Heck, whoever you are, I'm sorry. Hey, if you want me to say your tag on stream, you gotta, you know, give me the tag. Otherwise, uh, I'm left shooting in the dark. I might as well call you Funky Kong. Um. Got an update. We are just waiting for the bands, the map bands coming in here. Uh, which is apparently the way the system goes. And there we go, finally. We've got Luigi versus Pac-Man coming up. Two of the, some may argue, more slower-paced characters until you see how fast these people's aerials come out. Then it's just straight-up threatening, starting out on FD, which is going to give uh, not as many platforms for Pac-Man to hide under, but that could prove to be to Luigi's detriment. Oh, uh, dropped out there for a second, though. Immediate grab from Pac-Man right there. Going to drop down the fire hydrant, but oh, grabbing the grapefruit and now shielding next to the hydrant with it, going for the shield pressure, throwing it out of shield, not going to be able to get that much of a punish, parrying the nair. That could have been a big combo there. You see, every single time they're go, uh, Ziggler is going for these zares, they're getting clashed with, but again and again, Ziggler keeps catching these fruits whenever they come out. And there's the grab going for the down throw into the down B. Luigi Cyclone is going to steal that stock away. And Heck is down too, so, which means they cannot play that slower paced game. And ooh, getting the up smash right there onto the fire hydrant. <laughs> Not expecting that second hit right there. It seems like Ziggler is getting more use out of the Fire Hydrant than Pac-Man is right now. Which is showing the amount of stage control they are. But Luigi off stage, never a good thing unless you get the misfire. Now situations are reversed. But not going for the ledge trap anymore. Heck is going to get the parry right there onto the up smash. So not going to get punished for that. That could have feasibly been a combo right there. Luigi's up smash does not have the ending lag that many do. Ooh. Did not expect that one, though. Threw the key into the fire hydrant. Went straight into Ziglet's face. Stole that stock away. You expect the one projectile. You expect another one by itself. But two at the same time. Uh, never a fun uh, laser grid to slip through right there. Going for the slow grab right there. An opportunity to maybe punish that, but not going to get it. And it's just going to be Ziglet holding center stage. I mean... Again, I, I appreciate the patience right here, forcing Pac-Man to stay in the corner. They're not really even getting an opportunity to pull those fruits. Finally getting that, though, now the Galaga spaceship coming out. And now Ziggler grabbed a hold of it themselves, using it against Pac-Man. And the Ford Smash is going to send the Fire Hydrant towards Heck, going to get him off stage. 
They recover. Pac-Man, one of the best recoveries in the game against Luigi, who doesn't have a great one. Going for the key into the fire hydrant again, but Ziggler's wise to that. Did not shield all the hits, though, of the Luigi Cyclone. So Ziggler gonna get a free all stage once again, but the ledge trapping is there. Catches the jump from ledge. Again, it's really hard to guard that. I I don't remember if it's just intangible or if it clashes with everything, but that Pac-Man side B is a force to be reckoned with. Going straight to ledge, but they don't quite catch it. They almost get two frame, but Ziggler's a little too slow, and the roll from ledge is not caught because, you know, Wi-Fi. The trampoline does save Ziggler's life, though. It gives them a very fast recovery, but then they get caught. The Luigi Cyclone doesn't create the threat zone that they would normally want. And, ooh, final smash right there, but... <laughs> The sliding Luigi Cyclone off stage, looking more like melee than ultimate right there, though. Not quite. Going for the bell right now, the kill confirm. Does catch Ziggler with the out of shield, but the reaction isn't quite there. Almost gets the falling Nair combo starter, but the percentage is a little too low. That might steal it, though, just barely surviving. Good DI right there. And another misfire on the recovery from Ziggler. That's at least three off stage right there. The up tilts now leading into the up airs. Already 54% on Hex last stock. If Ziggler can steal this away, they have a chance of stealing next game too, but they get up right into the bell. Now it's stock on stock, and if Hex plays this right, it could be a very even game for the jab sending that fire hydrant off stage, but the up B out of shield will take it for Ziggler as Hex does go down. And it's going to be seven stocks to six right now. And JCU in the lead in the first crew battle. On the Luigi, probably one of the best uh, people to have in for only one stock, because Luigi is, you know, the stock stealer. <laughs> if you don't, if you're not ready for that, you just get one grab. Even stealing one stock and then playing a neutral game and maybe getting another. That is exactly what you want to see from Ziggler right now, as we're getting the next player in from Johnson & Wales. I, I do have to imagine... Oh. And uh, we are going to have a challenger approaching. It's going to be uh, Aeon here on the mic to help out. Ready to continue casting these games. Did we lose you, Miles? Oh. I guess my Wi-Fi flickered there. Whoop. Could you not hear me there? Nope. You, you cut out a little bit. I think you were oh, just... Oh, are uh, you hopping on the mic You again? were so embarrassed by me showing up that... Uh, you had to go. Yeah, I'm think I'm gonna help out for the rest of the night as an interim caster. Happening. We've got webcam set up like a classic Nintendo DS. If you've got the stream open, uh, and yeah, we are looking at a good game so far. You talked about the Luigi. Uh, you know, didn't get the flashy zero to death combos that Luigi's like to do, but we got a lot of RNG out there. Uh, just Luigi doing Luigi things, getting his team the lead. So you said that uh, obviously we don't have the other team's info. What kind of character would you want to play against a Luigi? All right, so I think we might still be having some technical issues as we do have a little bit of a uh, frozen keel. I think I'm back. I think I'm okay. back. I, I, can you hear me this yes, time? Yes, we, we can hear you. We're not scuffed anymore? <laughs> awesome. All awesome. Right. Excellent. Now... I will not pretend to have an intricate knowledge of every Luigi matchup, but I think often the Spaceys have pretty good matchups against Luigi, specifically Wolf and Fox. Fox more because he can sort of close the distance and punish. You think of Luigi's tether grab as kind of difficult to punish online, but if there's one character who's fast enough to do it, it is Fox, and a lot of I am not trying to insult Ziggler right here, but a lot of Luigi's are not incredibly practiced uh, with comboing such a fast faller. Meanwhile, Wolf, like I said earlier, that transcendent laser is key for just getting through any semblance of neutral that Luigi is throwing out. Yeah, and from my perspective, I think a character like a Sorty, maybe not like Ike because he's a bit heavy and becomes combo food, but someone like a Lucina, someone who's able to come uh, from the air and swipe in a way that she's not going to get hit by the plunger, some kind of long disjoint for landing aerials uh, so you don't get punished by the plunger is a character that I would go with. Yeah, I would second that Lucina pick, especially because Lucina... And Roy to an extent. Yeah, actually Roy to a full extent. They're both fast enough to get in there and really punish 
uh, Luigi, but they can also play the spacing game. I think Lu Cena, obviously the better one out of the two, but either one could easily be a force to be reckoned with. You can throw a crumb in there if you want, but... Uh... <laughs> if you're feeling real, real, uh, a little sick nasty. Ooh, but instead going for the Pichu. And that is actually a good uh, choice right there, because Pichu is a character that can't really be comboed that well by Luigi. So small, so light, so pancakey. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know always a risk reward with Pichu. It's uh, light killed off by any character at any time, but also not going to be comboed for very long. Mm hmm. And that is what you got to keep in mind. You're gonna be trying to stay low to the ground, crouching as much as possible, but an immediate uh, down throw into down air. But again, Pichu just crouched and then shielded, got right under those moves. Yeah, you mentioned Pretty earlier 69%. pancaking, which is an actual technique that uh, it's not just a funny nickname. It is really what that's called. Yep. And that is Inkling's whole thing sloshing around in there. That's the only reason she's relevant. But, oh, what you got to remember is Pichu is the lightest character in the game. So that up smash at 90% is fatal. And that's why Ziggler is spamming that up smash on that side platform right there. Because if uh, Bimo would happen to run into it, it's game over. And it might oh, look silly just to spam up smash, but the amount of lag that doesn't exist on that move, uh, it makes it like a non-issue for Luigi. Yeah, of course. And Ziggler even getting that one stock off right there, giving a huge advantage to whoever's up next, especially as Peach is a glass cannon and you just put a crack in it. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely dangerous. He needs to get that stock on the Luigi at 109. If Luigi gets another stock at 100% on last stock... Oh, and this is an incredibly dangerous situation. Does make it out, though. But the misfire really saved them right there. Stick it in the wall. Uh, you saw Bimo was ready with the Nair, and, well, Ziggler just zipped right out of dodge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, it might not actually be a uh, misfire. It may just be a fully charged one. Uh, I'm not actually sure, because we're not hearing the audio cues. Uh, but nevertheless, it is good to... <laughs> funny to stick yourself in the wall and count. And that thunder did not work. <laughs> And the rage on that almost caught him Ooh. right there. And the second one, oh. <laughs> two time, two timer right there, catching him. And that's two stocks off a of Bimo right there. That's not what you want to see as a Pichu. Go, a three stock against one Luigi at 160. percent This is where it gets Ooh, hard. Rage, just spamming that Luigi Cyclone, sliding all around. Ziggler poised to take this. This is anyone's game right now because uh, literally an up B right now would kill Pichu. All right, edge guard. Can we get the Luigi off stage? And Nair does take it before he's able to grab the wall. Does eventually get the Luigi, but <laughs> that is a scary situation because when Luigi is at 160, you don't get to combo him, even with a character like Pichu, who's that's the whole shtick. Yeah, of course. I mean, and it it was really scary right there for a second because, again, full rage. Seeing Pichu offstage get hit by the misfire, I was terrified <laughs> for a second that it was Luigi who had somehow stolen that. I would have felt so bad, but Luigi is probably of, uh, if I can say Luigi is high tier, I think he is, uh, probably one of the most exploitable, exploitable recoveries out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a scary situation. Now we are going to move on to the second player from NJCU. Who do you think, uh, from who we've seen, is going to come out? Do you think we're going to get a, a Hydra at some point? I think that's going to be an anchor for later. Or do you think they're going to punch a little rat? I think the strategy is always to have Hydra as the anchor just in case, because you never know who that third player is going to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So while they're testing the waters, I'm thinking they're going to have Hydra in reserve. So it's probably going to be already coming out. The Palu is a good coverall, especially against that Pichu. Uh, not to say that Pichu is not, uh, you know, good against Palu, but definitely not the threat he once was. <laughs> yeah, Pichu's definitely been toned down multiple times. Used to be arguably the best character in the game, despite the massive drawbacks of damaging yourself. Um, but even with all of these nerfs, uh, both less knockback from its attacks and taking more damage from its own attacks, Pichu's still a really scary character to fight. Yeah, it certainly is. And it is going to be Artie coming in now. Uh, so I can't imagine... I know Artie does have a Joker, but I'm not sure if you, wanted to play, if you would want to play Joker against a Pichu. 
because uh especially with the nerf I, I was about to say recent nerf but that was almost eight months ago at this point when joker gets comboed hard you lose arsene way faster and i don't think that's something you want to put in against a pichu because those multi-hit moves will steal it away as fast as you get it so this is going to be the palu Yep, that is a good read on the Palu. Definitely a safer choice than Joker, especially online. In my opinion, Joker is the best land character, uh, but not quite going to get the same results online. <laughs> yeah, I I really do think... I, I do agree that Joker is probably up there, personally. I... I I've been converted by the ESAM school. I gotta say it's Pikachu. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> yeah, like, we might be there. Like, it might be an, an impractice thing, but in, like, theory, Pikachu just zero to deaths everyone. But speaking of zero to deaths, getting those upper chains onto Artie right now, and the down throw as well. Such a dangerous combo throw, even at almost 40%. That explosive flame almost catching Bimo, but they've just barely managed to shield it, and now they got another opening. Oh, and catches them with that thunder. Gonna take Artie's first stock quickly, and uh, that is not what you want to see. I again, Bimo putting in work. Maybe they just needed a bit of a warm up, or maybe Ziglet was just that good. But right now, Artie is g really getting a run for their money. It you see, Bimo is just going for these bread and butter, not going for too much of a risk. Oh, but that spike there almost catches Artie. Delayed that up B for as long as possible. The Nair, though, getting BMO off stage. Going to catch him right now. Trying to get the dash grab, but dash grab not as disjointed as the Ooh. standard grab. Oh, <laughs> platform cancels. Yeah, Artie's I'd giving us a light show. Yep. Ooh, and now if we're getting Artie's a no-show. <laughs> oh, <Yep>. no. <laughs> but if Artie is famous for anything, it's definitely those... Uh, those teleport cancels, because uh, that is what has stood out to me. It, it's so tricky trying to see through where exactly they're going to end up. I know it's not the most unpunishable thing, but, <laughs> oh, well, oh, and Artie has stolen the stock. There We're we go. <laughs> so that is going to be a down to three stocks for J uh, Johnson and Wales. I don't believe Pelutena lost any more stocks than the one that we saw. Uh, Pichu nope. was already at like, you know, like a 60%, probably kill a round for uh, Pichu. Um, so, not unexpected. Uh, we weren't able to see it when it happened, but we, we can all imagine. I imagine I could. I imagine probably threw out a stray back air, just got him off stage, and then, you know, threw out literally any of Palutena's aerials at ledge. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's my favorite part about Palutena when people say she's not one of the best in the game. There is heavy debate about which one of her aerials is the best. Because they're all contenders for the best of that aerial in the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Palutena, like, not only does, is every aerial good, but like you said at the ledge, how many ledge options does that character have? Like, eight? Like, two different <laughs> distances of the fireball. Uh, you can send out some, like, magic missiles... Uh, if they like do a getup attack, you can counter a getup attack. Down smash hits both the ledge and the roll option. She is just, that's what's so scary about her is she has so many options to ledge trap. Yeah, and I would say ledge trapping is definitely the call right there, especially because it seemed like Bima was very willing to go off stage, very willing to trade stocks at any means necessary. So if Artie went out there, there was a good chance that it would have just been a suicide spike from Bima, which I think would have been the right call. Get that one stock on the board and hope Rennie, whoever their anchor is, can uh, get that last one and go into an even fight with Hydra. Take my energy. <laughs> the vegeta getting thrown off the stage mm -hmm. right there um but we are going to be seeing very quickly gonna be a battle of the top tiers got palutena versus lucina yep it's uh yep. two very pretty ladies going at it uh they both got a little bit green hair i'm not actually entirely sure what uh hair color rennie is bringing to the party I'd say green is the right call. Maybe green after you've been out in the sun for yeah, too long. Yeah, like, you know what? It matches the foliage on this stage perfectly. 
Yeah, it definitely does, but Palu definitely got the die job done more recently. The spike, though, into the side B. Thorin already up with that. Uh, kind of a mix-up. You don't see that often from Lucina, but... Oh, and maybe uh, a lag check? Yeah, I'm thinking a lag check. I'm seeing some spikes here and there. Um, oh, oh, no, they're going back into it. They've oh. decided it is okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, good for them. Up B out of shield trying to get him off, but it was the non-sweet spot right there. So... Uh, Renny, yeah, I, I'm seeing definitely yep, yep. the loading we, signal We can down confirm there. it is not Parsec. 100% anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Arnie's just looking there like, are we really playing this? And Renny's like, yes. I'm gonna hit you in the face now. Yeah, I mean, I guess they just play it out. I don't know what the rules for ECAC call for in this situation. I think you play out the game and then test. Mm -hmm. uh, going for these Nair Chains and then a hard forward smash read. And ooh, we're going to call that hit stun right there. As Rennie and we're also going to call there. Johns. I can already imagine <laughs> what's going through Artie's head right now. Yeah, especially after the fiasco last week. I, I have to assume it's not the best scenario. But oh, the fourth throw into the explosive flame. Well, Gotta watch of... out, though. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, I was just kind of yeah. waiting for, like, a second flame. Uh, maybe if there was uh, less lag, they would have gotten that connection, flame ball into flame ball. Um, we might see it here. Uh, jump up. Mm, yes. The attempt is there. Yeah, Renny's got the drift to avoid it, though, but it's not the best scenario. Oh, parrying off ledge, but Lucina's aerials are so fast, she just throws out another one. Uh, watching this bit of a cutscene right now as Rennie sprints <laughs> off the ledge. Artie is just going for reads at this point. You gotta. Uh, when you're put in this situation, it's a scary prospect. You don't want to have to deal with that lag. Just yeah. going for the down tilt at ledge, hoping for the random two frame, but Artie has the timing to avoid that. Ooh, and then a run off of ledge. I'm not sure if that was on purpose. Artie is not having a great time, and as we all know, playing Smash Online, this is just uh, not the connections... <laughs> we like to play in here is another a reverse edge guard though okay nope we're not gonna get it yet yeah the dash attack is a good option right now because it often will trade um all right now I'm imagine betting... imagine it in your mind right now um palatine is getting forward aired forward aired uh, uh -huh. i'm a I'm imagining Artie is spacing back airs right now, trying to stay alive Artie was at almost 100 percent though so any raw forward smash could have stolen that stock Oh, but and we they are, are still back. alive, and they got Rennie's first stock. All right, we are now down to uh, the last two stocks. There's the back air that's going to close out NJ's second player. Now we're going into the anchor versus two stocks of a Lucina. I feel like Hydra's got this in the bag, but I feel like we might have a bit of a delay if we are going to go through with that test. Uh, I'm just going to check in with what's happening right now. Uh, yeah, it does look like we are uh, going to have the stream set up, hooked up to an Ethernet to avoid any issues like this. Uh, I'll obviously keep okay. you all up to date <laughs> on um, how this goes. <laughs> so <laughs> We got a new stream set up that we're working through. Every week is a new iteration. Every week it's going to get a, be a little better, mm. and it's getting a little better right now as we're getting that Ethernet cable plugged in. So, yeah, right yeah. now what we're doing is, you know when you have a power strip plugged into a power strip plugged into a power strip? Well, right now we're at that point where we have that, and it's a little yeah, bit yeah, on fire. Because that's, you know, you're, you're not supposed to do that. It's a fire hazard. No one ever listens, and then the physics classroom is on fire. I actually... that sound, that's a little too specific, Aeon. <laughs> not, not is exact... that perhaps from uh, personal experience? Not exactly what happened, but <laughs> we did have a, <laughs> a fire alarm went off in my high school. <laughs> and as we uh, escorted, my physics teacher ran back into the classroom to knock this, like, bowl he had taped around the fire uh, sensor, <laughs> the, like, the smoke detector. Because it's a physics classroom, stuff happens all the time that, like, sends smoke. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's not exactly up to code. You're supposed to have it uh, free air, free range smoke detector. Uh, so it was course, very funny to watch our like lanky physics teacher run back in, like uh, slam dunk it off the ceiling, then get back out. <laughs> the in the fire incident at my school was the t-shirt club. I do not know why we had a t-shirt club. You'll never guess what they set on fire. Oh my god! It, it was t-shirts. <laughs> 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 like a 
like a dissecting a t-shirts club <laughs> like no, time to no, find out no. what shirts are i if i remember correctly someone donated a t-shirt press to our school and we started a whole club around it so <laughs> good for us i guess but uh they were not very responsible for with it <laughs> uh, you know but you know who doesn't love uh like really specific high school clubs just uh, something you get on a t-shirt and you find out a goodwill three years later and you're like there's five different stories behind how this happened and i don't know any of them but i will wear this shirt because it kind of slaps well speaking of slaps i think we are going to get into a match that kind of slaps soon enough the two anchors hydra and rennie are gearing up now that we got our setup fixed uh i do have to assume that this is going to be a good one we are still we are still waiting for confirmation on that ethernet um <laughs> yeah uh, fun sure fact that... that everyone knows the switch doesn't have an ethernet port despite needing one for online gameplay <laughs> like not it need does. need but like morally there's a responsibility to have an ethernet adapter yeah it's it's schrodinger's no that's not a real thing um <laughs> occam's cat Schrodinger's razor, one of those. Some razors. Uh, just watch your step. You don't want to step on a cat or a razor or yeah. an Ethernet cord. Those <laughs> things—they're they, kind of skinny. They kind of hurt if you're in the dark and you don't expect it. Yeah, um, I've got a uh, Ethernet and HDMI under a rug that my cats like to move, and then I trip on the cables, and it's—it's it's a fun time. I have what I like to affectionately refer to as a nest of cables, but luckily most of them are on my desk, so I don't trip over them. But oh, I have to go behind go. my desk to set stuff up. That's when it goes. Oh, are, are we starting? Because I cannot see <laughs> it starting. Um, um, we don't know, so we are going to continue to fill time and break the fourth wall as casters. How's it going, everybody? I, I do think it is best right now if we do f go for a tiny break as we figure this yep, out. That so is we can a good idea. So we will. Staff, so we will be right back. And JCU just run through the ECAC bracket. We'll be back soon, so don't go anywhere. Yep. See you soon.
All right, everyone, we are uh, back. Some technical difficulties, maybe a little bit of lag, a little bit of spicy uh, lag coming up. We'll see as we go into the uh, possible last match of the first round. Yeah, it is going to be Rennie taking on Hydra. Another Palutena, but of a slightly different caliber. And uh, just... It's not looking super great so far. Yeah, I'm thinking we might just be playing this out in a different way. I'm not sure if the stream is going to continue based on uh, current data. But we will be seeing that. And this might just be a stage switch, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, given that we caught it in about 15 frames a second, maybe not. So we'll see what's maybe getting not. cooked up. Yep, uh, as we wait, I I guess we can break down the Palutena versus Lucina matchup. We saw a bit of it last time, and it is kind of a range battle. Palutena doesn't look like a character with a bunch of disjoints. She is. E everything is disjointed. Uh, <laughs> but Lucina, I think, has the faster disjoints she can just sort of throw out a barrage of aerials meanwhile palutena does have a have to be a little bit more careful with spacing them but if you do if you do get the spacing right it's just as devastating yeah it is devastating especially because while lucina does do like you know like you said the swipe the swipe quick aerials um palutena neutral air um this is the scientific term does go burr and then burr mm -hmm. and then burr and then burr yeah, it's like whoosh, 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 it's whoosh, 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 whoosh. and then you just you're hit by four of them, and then you're at seventy five percent damage, and you're like, ah, oh, well, thanks, Pally. Yeah, and that that is what we saw last time. Hydra, as we said, formerly Hydra still is a top player. They just haven't played in as many tournaments. They used to be, I think, uh, number seventeen on the Wi Fi Warriors ranking. So. They don't drop those combos. They, mm -hmm. You get hit by a Nair, you're taking 60 plus percent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so it does look like we are going to be doing a lag test without the current person in the lobby. So we are going to go back to a BRB screen, and we will let you know if we're going to come back to it or n wait. How's the lobby still open? Oh, because this is... Uh, this is the person yep. testing it. Yeah, so while they do some troubleshooting, we are going to go back to a break, and when we come back, we'll let you know uh, what the future of the rest of tonight will look like.
to count me in. Oh, I'm in? Okay. So, what is happening right now? We're just doing a lag check, checking who is the one who is slowing down the arena. And this is just uh, generic proof for ECAC to show that uh, Krista is the person we have in there as our observer, and Hydra is the player, so it is not on our end. Uh, so possibly we're just waiting for confirmation from the other lag tests happening. You can see none of the stutters we were seeing earlier, no delays, especially because, you know, they're playing Fox. And we do have confirmation from the players that they don't have, like, any input delay. It's not, like, a steady uh, lag that we are seeing. So yeah, hitting those teleport cancels. Oh, man, y you can tell uh, our the guy we have in there as our observer is a Rocket League player, not a Smash <laughs> player. Ooh, Hydra got those cancels as well. <laughs> it's unfortunate we don't have any. I guess Captain Falcon is the closest to a Rocket League character. Would you agree with yeah, that? I, mean, I would. He's the closest we have to a race a car driver. Game. Yeah. We we don't have any characters that turn into cars. If uh, Mona from Persona 5 was in the game, that would definitely be his side B. Uh, but we don't have any car characters. Hold on. I have a I have a controversial opinion. I think it's Rob. I, I think I think Rob would be it. Because, like, you know, the rocket booster is the one thing. A lot of air man maneuverability, yeah. like, just slipping and sliding around in there, spinning around every time he does an aerial. How did we forget I about Wii Fit Trainer? For Rocket League? For soccer oh, balls. Oh, there's a ball. Yeah. <laughs> she literally has soccer balls. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a volleyball, I think. Is it? Isn't it? I think it's a soccer it's ball. It's a volleyball. She no, hits have it. You, listen, she, she listen. She in the air and hits it. It's a volleyball. <laughs> from a Wii Fit vet, such as myself, it is from the game called Soccer Header, where you lean back and forth to hit soccer balls in the heads, avoiding the severed panda heads. What? We fit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's that supposed is, to be uh... like mascot heads, but uh, I was like 14 and it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, panda header. Or yeah. Soccer header. Yep. So I'm pretty sure that's a soccer ball because uh, that's what you do. Uh, if anyone else played We Fit like me, you only played the games and ignored the yoga and bodybuilding entirely. And then you got Ring Fit when it came Wait. out, and it kicked your butt, so you don't play it anymore. Wait, no, I'm uh, I'm calling bull on that one because <laughs> she expressly it it is not a header. She is not hitting it with her head. She's expressly throwing it up and hitting it with her hand. She does hit the it like a volleyball. The one thing you are not allowed to do in soccer. Hmm. <laughs> it's a volleyball. Jury's still out. I, I will out. Google the name of the moves. All right, I've got the wiki up. The side special is called the header. The description says, heads a soccer ball. So, uh, dab dab. Oh. That's the content we get on this stream. And, while we're waiting, yeah, while speaking we're of waiting. content, a oh, video game! <laughs> I, I do not think this is the match. I think this is a continued lag test. Maybe. Might be a uh, Wait, check. no, Rennie did say they were resetting their routers, so this might just be the game. We got the sparks flying, and we are on Yoshi Stories to settle this once and for all. The last uh, two stocks right here of... Um... Oh, it's not super great right now. Yeah, it does appear, and that is... That is the thing that sucks with COVID, because you know it's not Rennie's fault. If we had our way, we would at the very least be playing in a facility at their school. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, but definitely. Instead, now, one, instead, we did not get that. One thing I would say is, um, where do you live right now? Me? Yes. Do you uh, live, I live in New England area? Sort of. Right below it. I live in Pennsylvania, yeah. How bad is the weather right now? Because I keep seeing posts about snow taking people's internet out, and that might be well, the issue. That could be it? No, because snow comes usually comes in from the ocean, so, like... They would have gotten the snow before us, and the snow's all done, so unless there's a hot new snowstorm... <laughs> new snowstorm uh, just that dropped. I'm... <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. I I have to assume that there is no snow. Th- there is a significant amount of snow, and my back hurts like hell from shoveling it. But also, I I think the snow is more or less done with. So unless the internet is still out. I would not blame that, but ooh. Yeah, we are seeing a button check part two with the host and the player from Rhode Island. Uh, So it does definitely seem to be a Johnson and Wales uh, connection issue and not uh, production side. So, but we here at NJCU <laughs> want to once again remind you: it is not the player's fault. Blame the virus. Yep. Blame the virus. This blame is Smash not Online. Conditions. Yep. Because I they're, guarantee they're... you, they are wired and still having problems. Mm-hmm. So I do not know what the course of action is now that we have established uh, it with every player to see what is happening. Uh, so we'll. I, I remember Johnson and Wales had four players listed on their roster, so maybe they could sub someone in, I or maybe forfeit this crew battle and play the next one without Rennie, because the other players were fine from the looks of it. It was some good smash. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, aside from that particular person, you're right, it was pretty smooth. It was a lot smoother than we had seen last week. So hopefully they can get something figured out. Hopefully they do have a sub on backup. Um, neither of us are well read in the ECAC rules, uh, but hopefully there's some kind of compromise that the teams can come to. In the meantime, um, you guessed it. We're going to be right back while we figure out the situation.
And we are back, everybody. Uh, the solution we came to is we're going to have another player play the Lucina, and then we will figure out a different lineup for the next time. So we got Hydra taking on Bimo with two stocks. Bimo back at it again, rocking that Lucina this time. Different color, though. Going for the blonde. Yeah, I know that every skin has a Fire Emblem character that it's based on. No clue who that is. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I watched the Polygon video at one point on how to recognize all <laughs> 596. Out, they're all the same. But, yep. <laughs> uh, so I think that was just a button check. We are going to get into it right now. Uh, going to have BMO on two stocks again. Just making sure everything is up to shape. Uh, hopefully that player from... Uh, Johnson and Wales. Hopefully team. they are uh, still alive. Johnson and Wales, that's the one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully they can. Them. What you're saying, uh, speaking of polygon or uh, unraveled, uh, we were just making sure that the connections are all OSHA compliant. Uh, <laughs> and for anyone who hasn't seen this video, uh, it turns out that the only OSHA compliant stage in Smash is the boxing arena from Punch Out. It's the only stage that is safe, uh, generally hazardless, and has fire extinguishers. Very good, very good. Where yeah. are the fire extinguishers? Are they just in the background? They might be in the background. And of okay. course the lights do fall, but that's only if you're up attacking them, so it's like, that's not really their fault. Yeah. Like, if I attacked my light with a hoe run bat or a fireball, <laughs> I would assume, like, I can just push it and it'll fall. Yeah, I don't think that's oh. on uh, whoever owns and operates the punch-out circuit. <laughs> All right, yep. and it looks okay, like we're, we're jumping getting... right in. Finally, after all this time, we get to see the thrilling conclusion. Uh, Hydra, two stocks, BMO. Oh, wait, no, Hydra, three stocks, BMO, two. Uh, BMO, not playing their main, presumably. Were they the one playing Pichu? I think they were. That does sound right. <laughs> now, I do want to say, regarding uh, online brackets, uh, have you ever been in a uh, crew battle? Uh, I have not, no. When you do a Lightning crew battle you, and you're down stocks, like if you're coming in, you jump off, you do a neutral start, and you do a countdown. And that is impossible to do online, so players will be in the funniest positions, like, uh, you know, like we just saw, up air, up air, kill off the stage. Yeah, that was kind of brutal. It looked like BMO was about to get out of there, but it, it was the frame trap. Hydra was waiting with that falling up air to catch him, even if they air dodged. <laughs> yeah, this is a scary stage. Platforms are good for landing on if you're getting juggled, unless an up air covers the entire platform. Oh. F Smash doesn't quite kill yet. BMO's got one more chance, and, and it's you gone. No, Hydra's not dropping that. Never. Never miss an alleged trap. Not once. Yeah. As they do a celebratory up tilt and seal the first crew battle in the favor of NJCU. They just need one more to take it home. Yep. Now we can definitely tell that Hydra does not skip trap day at the gym. Gotta get those shoulder muscles <laughs> uh, nice and firm. If you're doing any heavy lifting, such as Hydra, heavy lifting his entire team. I would not say it was a carry. <laughs> I mean, the rest of the team did... Uh, Hydra had the advantage in that. Uh, I would say, if anything, it was BMO coming in clutch to save their team from the dreaded bowels of disqualification. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're going to see what changes are made to the lineup, um, as I'm I, pretty sure you can't normally play the same player twice. Yeah. Like I said, uh, on the website, they had... Uh, they had four players listed. So, I don't know if that was maybe a coach or if that was the fourth player. I hope it was the fourth player. I hope they're, like, frantically texting someone like, we said you weren't in the lineup tonight, but <laughs> it's we the big you. game and it's you need urgent. to get off the bench right now. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a high school musical pass me the ball moment. <laughs> Yeah, so it does look yep. like we're going to get no fundies in here. Going to get a Ziggler. Luigi action. I, I'm betting. I, I've never seen Ziggler play Luigi twice in a row. Now, I, I've only seen Ziggler in, like, four games. But still, <laughs> I, I have to assume we're going to see 
Hmm. Sample size if they is know small, it's a Pac Man, okay, might be a they're, the, they're the counter pick player. Mm -hmm. If we know it's a Pac Man, who who counters? Like I, I genuinely do not know Pac Man's matchups. I mean, Wolf I can't maybe be Joker, bad, right? Uh, Wolf can't be bad. Like um, even as a heavy, like that you can you can reflect whenever you need to heavy hits. Probably like one F like uh, forward tilt will hit the hydro like in one hit. Uh, so I would imagine if he's counterpicking, he would go to that. I can't imagine Luigi being a super fun matchup, as that might actually be one that Pac-Man can wall him out. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that was something... Uh, I, th It wasn't BMO. It was... I think that it was Yeet or something. Like, it, it wasn't their actual tag. It was Heck. It was Heck. Um, Who's coming in right now. Yep. That was something... They didn't realize until the end. They tried to fight Luigi up close and personal, or rather, Ziglet controlled center stage and forced Heck to fight them up close and personal. Uh, but I, I did see they were starting to play a more patient game towards the end there. But at that point, it was too late. Ziglet already had them figured out. If they go for that campy style from the start, it's going to be really difficult for Luigi to get that approach in. It's going to be have. It's going to have to be a lot of hard reads. From Mr. No Fundies over here. Yep. And, well, like you said previously, from someone named No Fundies, they definitely seem to understand the fundamentals of this game, uh, including some nice reads. Yeah, sweet reads. Do reads count as fundies? I don't think they do. Like, I guess that, that I guess was, that's a, I a layer above fundies. There's there's knowing I, I what the... your moves and do and like on shield and stuff. Uh Next level, I think, is uh, reads. And there is the switch up. I have a list right now of all the characters Ziggler has either told <laughs> me they are going to play or have played. It's up to five now. Um, so let me just add Palu as the game gets started off and immediately uh, it's going to be Hex seizing center stage, but that dash attack is going to true combo into that fire hydrant, almost frame trapping Heck with that up air, but just barely escaping. Now, the recovery you can't really challenge, but the ledge trap is there with the dash attack. Invincible, not going to trade with that at all. And there's not a lot that feels better than using Pac-Man's own projectiles against him. Uh, we're going to see a lot of the invincible dash attack and back air with the shield uh, reflect to stop any projectiles. This is definitely another good choice against a Pac-Man. This is flawless right now uh finally took the first hit right there but ziggler is almost gonna fish it, finish it off with the dash attack i feel like this palutena switch up was the uh mix up you needed right now Th though this is quickly becoming a triple palutena team which ethically <laughs> i'm not sure i can condone but <laughs> i mean this is, is a pretty sick a a njcu is a higher ranking team three palus might be the reason why <laughs> Can you call Ziggler a Palu player, though? They are a player who plays Palu. I but... mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. I, I saw an edge cancel teleport on that platform. What more do you need from a Palu? I mean, yeah, that's that's the Palu tech right there. Um, Gonna be going for the ledge traps right now, but it's a little too slow. Ziggler is not, like... You see a lot of people stalling off stage every now and then. Ziggler just wants to get right back in there and brawl. And that is playing to Hex's favor right now, but finally Ziggler is re- uh sees center stage and they're using that to great effectiveness oh just barely surviving that fire hydrant by trading it with it with the up air i am waiting for a reflect on that hydrant make it go bounce up uh <laughs> that, would, that would straight up kill oh, off the top at fun. about any percent uh, yep. so keep an eye out on that so the forbidden kilo miles lore is i used to be a jigglypuff player primarily and uh you can rest the fire hydrant and just send it flying up into the air. That's <laughs> and funny. It'll kill it anything. Yeah, the uh, I was one of the two best players at my college for a while. We were a Little Mac and a Jigglypuff, so I know I know all about the funny tech, like being able to KO punch a Pikmin or a fire hydrant. Ah, a Pikmin. Mm -hmm. but yeah, you can send though? that Pikmin straight to hell. <laughs> Express delivery. And you know they have souls, too. So. <laughs> yeah, we can see them. <laughs> uh, we're, we actually got a neutral. It's been a, not a whole lot of direct interactions yeah. that Apple's going to sneak right by, though. 
Palu as a goddess does get to decide who goes to heaven and hell <laughs> and is sending Pac-Man straight to one of them. Uh, um, up means I think heaven, optimistically right? we can say becoming a star is heaven. Yeah, I think I would say that. I don't know what Sideways does, though. <laughs> we don't know either. Wait, it sends you to Minecraft. We know this. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, I don't know, is that a fate worse than death? No, that's awesome. I'd love to live in Minecraft. The one but, time we ooh, saw was... it, they got launched into a Minecraft world, and Steve blocked them in with a creeper. Well, I, I, I don't... Ooh, that grab, though! Think that's Did you see that range... They definitely did that uh, grab much better in this game than Smash 4. Yep, and it just stays out for so long. You think you can challenge it, and then you run in. Palutena, for, for all her strong suits, she is not a rushdown character. She can be played as one, but she is not as fast as some other top tiers. You cannot go in there to punish that grab without the best timing on the planet. Yeah, it's... And heck, like... Like I said, is playing this slower game. That's why our commentary has been a little unfocused <laughs> for now. Yeah, it was, uh, it was just like back to back hits, and now they're kind of just floating around each other. Pac Man's doing Pac Man things, like Ooh. dying off the top and going down to hell. Yeah, reading that, uh, reading that neutral air dodge, it it's always going to be death with that Palu up air. I you can't say this really because of all of Palu's aerials. But it stays out for so long. It, it's, <laughs> it, it almost kind of reminds me of Smash 4 Roses up air, where it just sort of hangs out there, and you, you, you get to decide how you want to deal with it. And there's no good answers. You're going to die. Yeah, there's a special place for people who programmed the up air and down air of Rosalina. And any move that's soft spot is also a spike. I'm looking at you, Zelda. Is it really? It is. Her soft Zelda... dare still spikes you. Zelda is a floaty who hits like a heavy. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing she's slow. <laughs> yeah, a, a floaty who hits like a heavy and also zones. Mm -hmm. Luckily, And I was actually she's saying bad. that this last week. I feel like Lucas is also in that same weird archetype as mm -hmm. Zelda, where they are a floaty who hits like a heavy, who also zones, and is somehow bad, too. <laughs> I, I don't get how that happened. Yeah, I mean, like, it... You look at their traits on paper, and it looks like they should be good. Like, Lucas is all that crazy movement with his B-reverses and wave bounces, and Zelda has some of the best ledge trapping and uh, get-off-ledge options, and then they're just not good, unless you listen to Mewtwo King, <laughs> in which case Zelda's high tier. You know, but yeah, no, that just comes down to, like, how the lower tier characters have good options and the higher tier characters are just better. And I think that is a shining spot of the balancing so far in ultimate is that even when you're playing a character that's not top tier, they do still have good options. Yeah. And I uh, just taking a second to praise ultimate's balance here for a <laughs> second, they did manage to make every character fun to play. Sometimes it's not fun to play against, but all the characters <laughs> have a at least one play style that is fun to play. Even like someone like Olimar, you think they're not fun, but then you go in there, you hop around with them, and you see Nintendo did do a decent job with designing him. They're like if you play him campy, he's not that fun, but it, it's not about playing optimally. Yeah, it's, it's about, it's being about fun. having like your right Pikmin chains, and like you're playing your a little mini game inside the game, and like even a character like Duck Hunt Dog, who you hate to fight, is still like you said enjoyable from the player side. Duck Hunt is just wacky. My best one of my best friends was a uh, Duck Hunt main, and now we got Bimo in here, <laughs> and now he's no longer your friend. Yep. <laughs> uh, we're talking about casual smash for a second. We are back in competitive mindset. We're going to be seeing edge cancels. We're going to be seeing down throw into up air into up air from either person because both of them have it. But there's going to be the up tilt chains coming out. Bimo is on point with this Pichu combo game and they are a bit more warmed up than we saw them last time. Yeah, I mean, especially since they've played uh, <laughs> multiple characters so far, uh, they're definitely raring to go on their main. And that was a bit of a weird recovery, especially because Peach doesn't have a hitbox going right into Ziglet's face. But you got to watch out, though, because one more percent. Oh, luckily it was a multi-hit move. Yeah, uh, Ziglet was almost at 69% there, and that could have been dangerous. 
Great ledge trapping from BMO going from the ledge, coming up with a down air. Oop, it caught Ooh. by that Pelu. I like that drag down up air. I, I love drag down combos. Probably the most unique thing about Ultimate, I would say, and one of the most fun. Like, you see it and you're like, dang, that's a, such a cool extension. <laughs> yep, and then uh, BMO just extended into the blast zone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> forward tilt. It, it's just so good for covering so much space, and it st again stays out for so long. Uh, every character, when they have a move that stays out for long, they go, "Man, that's such a good character." All of Palu's moves do that, yep. and it's just so easy to take up so much space on the stage. As uh, like I said, just throw out the up air to counter any chance of Bimo going off stage. Yeah, the Palutain has definitely got the options that last forever with an up air that is a, the size of the platform. And I think we really got to go uh, uh, pause for a little bit and appreciate how good Ziglet is on this tertiary character uh, going into the second fight in this crew battle. Like, this wasn't just a Palu to fight a Pac-Man. This is, they're playing Palu. Ooh! Oh, and they've read it. Bimo has been going on the stage every time with that up B. So Ziggler says, okay, I'm going to put a wall of light in front of you straight out of Dishonored. No way you're getting through this. And there's no way getting through that either. Uh, Ziglet loses the second stock. So far, one per enemy player. That At that rate, will get him to the last uh, fighter. Uh, we are going back to a little bit of a neutral, and Bimo has safely landed. Ziggler's playing this so well, still kind of in the slower playstyle rather than the more uh, aggressive space-taking style that we saw on the Luigi, which is funny to say, because Palu is arguably <laughs> taking more space just playing safe, but oh, that explosive flame, good thing that does not send out. Bimo, though, above Palu, never where you want to be. Taking center stage right now, they are so high in percent, lightest character in the game. One hit could kill, but one combo could kill as well. Down throw into thunder, anything could take Ziggler out of this, going for a tech situation but the back air is going to steal it, but they're still alive. Bimo still living, and they are going to ledge this time, learning from their mistakes. Ziglet might have read a roll from ledge right there, but not going to get a chance to punish that. And because of that, they're going to stay alive for now. Bimo, every attack they throw out, they get higher and higher. They're almost at max rage, and finally, that'll kill it. Ziglet cut <laughs> already. The first player sent in by NJCU going to face the anchor of Johnson and Wales. Yeah, we saw really good spacing from that Palu. Uh, Bimo almost came back, got the mental win, and was starting to get some combos, some chains going on the Palutena. Um, but what's nice about Palutena is not only is her back air fast and like a fast fall, uh, so you don't have a lot of lag, it is invulnerable. The uh, electroshocks coming out from Pichu uh, just get eaten right up, as we saw, went through the electro bolts uh, and right into the Pichu. Yep, it is quite <laughs> quite a difficult thing to deal with because it, it's the thing you have to respect, but you don't want to. <laughs> you, you see a you see a move that looks like it might have end lag, and you want to go in there and punish it, and you don't get a chance to, and it's it's kind of brutal. And on top of that, we're lie. online. Mm hmm. And I think that might have been why we saw um a couple things. One, uh. Ziglet teleporting in front of people because often online you don't have the reaction ability to try and like realize that and do something immediately uh ultimate already is a game based with very little and lag compared to previous games uh, which makes it even harder to punish online uh, and we also saw stuff like peach not clipping to ledge that might have been on purpose but it also might have been just not being able to get the right angle through the lag which again there's not a lot of lag but it's Smash Online. There's always just yeah, enough to mess you up. Pichu and Pikachu, some of the best recoveries in the game, but also some of the easiest recoveries to SD with in the game, <laughs> I think. Uh, speaking from experience, obviously, I, I am more of a casual Pikachu and Pichu player. Uh, not my area of expertise, but... I, I often find myself just inches away from that ledge. I imagine Bimo in that high risk situation didn't want to go for those hard, like, like special angles that you see 
like the top top tier of yeah uh, you're going for like a non too frameable uh recovery from up top to the stage kind of like that and then the ledge cancels can give you an infinite uh <laughs> stall we're um, melee now yep we're back at it again folks but speaking of back at it again we got the run it back this time of Ziggler versus Bimo because of that issue with the lag before. That means we are going to have uh, one stock on Ziggler and Bimo has uh, has the reads on them. And y- you can tell they want to take these three stocks as far as they can. But Pichu, you got to get those combos fast. You got to go heavy with it. You see just fishing for that up tilt. Immediately the down throw, though, does not lead into a lot, though. The parry almost gives an opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely interesting, be- not even being on another character. Bimo just gets to be in the bracket twice. And it almost makes me wonder, what would a normal tournament be like if instead of a best of three, you both just start with nine stocks and then uh, do a crew battle format? That would uh, maybe some ideas worth selling later on. Um, but we are going to see... I just suck. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like... Wait, do you mean a nine-stock game? No, I mean uh, like a crew battle where if you lose... Uh, or if you win, but you lost a stock, you start the next game at two. Something like that, maybe. Uh, but we are seeing uh, BMO pretty handily Ooh. get that stock. Bit of an unfortunate uh, teleport downwards. Uh, as I we think... are finally going to put this Palutena in the grave. Finally. It took BMO a little bit, but they were able to do it. And I think that was intentional. I think uh, Ziggler was trying to go low to go right into the ledge, and just the ang was a little bit off. So you, you, you can't wouldn't all... say that the SD was on purpose, but the the thought was there. The the I thought behind it because Peachy was throwing out those thunder jolts. Uh, it it was a difficult uh, maze of bullet fire to get through. They just didn't find the way through. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It happens. We're finally going to see a second player from NJCU in this round. Uh, a second Palutena. A second Palutena <laughs> it could definitely be coming up. We could see Hydra come in and say, all right, we're done for tonight. Let's uh, get those stocks out of there. Uh, yeah, BMO I, still I, could I, hold their own, but that's six stocks to go through. I think BMO would appreciate the chance to take on Hydra on their main because BMO has shown themselves to be a formidable fighter um they definitely i i liked their uh, almost more conservative pichu play style where they were going for guaranteed damage guaranteed combos instead of trying to get a read mid combo that could have gotten them punished gotten a reversal and that was what was killing ziglet in the beginning luckily ziglet found a way around it which was to just play it a better character who has more <laughs> options out of a combo and uh make sure those guaranteed combo like on the Ouija uh Bimo had a lot of opportunities to get those guaranteed safe combos on Palutena with the spacing back airs you never got a chance yeah just just a complete wall um and we are going to see Hydra possibly bring a second wall in the form of their own Palutena and this could be the final match. Bimo could pull off an upset, though. Um, honestly, it's not entirely out of the range of possibility to at least get three stocks and move on to the next player before depleting their own stocks. Yeah, it is a 3v3. Uh, Hydra obviously does not want to let this happen. This has been a long stream, a long crew battle, <laughs> obviously. I think Hydra, like you said, just wants to come in there, put their foot down, and say, No! <laughs> I don't think this is going on any farther. Just, uh, we're, we're, we're done here. Let's uh, wrap this up. <laughs> and uh, just waiting. I, I assume we're doing bands right now, making sure the map is all ready to go. Um, I I do got to wonder, what do you think What do you think BMO's game plan is going to be here? Because Obviously, they got the Palu game plan, but I think if you try to play the same way you played against Ziglet's Palu against Hydra, it's not going to go in your favor at all. Completely different player, completely different character right here. And especially with those kind of uh, exploitable recoveries that Bimo was going for, that Ziglet only just started punishing towards the end there, Hydra is not going to let you get away with that. Not at all. Yeah, we're definitely going to see another kind of Palutena come out. We're going to have to see Pichu play a lot smarter, go with his bread and butter, but he's going to have to take risks uh, if mm-hmm. he does want to uh, push himself further into the crew battle. 
And we got smaller battlefield immediately the opener with the dash tech though, but evening out the damage exactly tied almost. Nair though, I, I see them throwing the Nair out. It's not the best combo starter, but it is one of the only non-self-damaging moves that Pichu has. Yeah, but right now it is incredibly even. Uh, again, because this is a crew battle, Bimo's gonna need to go more than even, at least like a 3-1 to one performance. Ooh, goes very low, uh, but does, Ooh. you know, Pichu recovery, does make it back. Yeah, perfect timing right there on that uh, roll, just barely avoiding the down smash. And we talked about having to be smarter getting off the ledge. Bimo has been doing just that, but it is the beginning of the game. They can't slack off, but oh! They read a roll that did not exist. Luckily, that back throw, though, does exist, Yeet. and it is one of the best kill throws in the game. Yeah, I love the animation. It's just a full-bodied yeet, yeet back. And now yep. BMO's still got a lot to work through as Hydra's just getting those chains going, already 40%. Hydra's yeah, you got to hit that tech solid. right there. It's the only way to escape the Nair train. <laughs> I don't I want to get off this train. I want to get off bone yeah, pun just... ride. We can see Bimo is trying not to challenge Hydra in the air as much anymore, playing a more grounded, shield-based game. And that is good, because then you can always go for the crouch, duck under any of those aerials that are meant to stuff out another aerial. Going for that, uh, I think that was just a forward tilt at ledge. Still one of the best uh, ledge tools in the game. Uh, if you've been seeing those videos, they've been in everyone <laughs> recommends. Long, floppy foot of Pichu's forward tilt. Yep. Edge guard situation. Yeah. That up B though, it's incredibly hard to edge guard. Best you can get is a two frame, which did not come out. Yeah. Palu not gonna be able to get that. And right now, Hydra is kind of in a tricky situation, covering their own recovery with that, but going for the long lasting hitbox there. Luckily, Hydra hit the tech. Oh, but if they had back thrown right there with all the rage, 110%, that almost certainly would have killed. I don't need but it. Though. They weren't able to get it. They the don't match need it. from BMO. <laughs> by Hydra, nope, living for now, but that was just an immediate uh, halo ring to kill. Yeah, Palu, Pichu, it, it's almost comical looking at how beefy it, it, their hits are. But right now, speaking of beefy hits, Palu has always been famous for that in Ultimate and getting the parry right there. Tried to go for the grab, but immediate dash attack made sure that the parry stun wasn't there. And uh, Hydra is having a little bit difficult little bit of difficulty right here you just see them throwing out nares because if bimo gets hit by one of them it's game Ooh. over but speaking of game over maybe trying to di away from the nair right there got caught by the back air and boom gun that'll be njcu taking it home at the end of this crew battle 2-0 yep that was a good performance from everybody shout out to bimo for being a good sport playing uh, multiple roles on multiple characters today glad to see that we were able to get the a uh, wonky setup working uh, between players and the unfortunate nor'easter uh, probably raging on right now. Um, and yep. yeah, good play from both sides. Uh, we will be back next week. Do you have any closing thoughts? Just be sure to check out all of the NJCU socials down in the panels below the Twitch. We got our Discord. We got Twitter, Instagram, all this stuff that you can use to keep updated on everything we're doing. Because it's not just Smash Bros. We got Rocket League. We got League of Legends. Uh, there's an Overwatch team bouncing around here somewhere. <laughs> and you know they're all just as good as this uh, Smash team, though. This Smash team is kind of on another level. Just... Uh, not bias is a part of the Smash production crew. <laughs> but anyways, though, I have been Keela Miles, uh, and this has been Aeon casting mm. and producing at the same time with us. I hope you have all had a wonderful night, and take it easy out there. Yep, have a good one, and see you in a week.